Do you hear that? It's the winds of change. Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo, what up, brothers? It's the director. Chargers fans, just like that, we are into the postseason. Let's talk about our first topic. Tom Telesco. Is it time to fire Tom Telesco, the Chargers GM? It's a sensitive topic for some people. Some people think it's time to move on. I get it, Chargers fans. We just went through one of the worst things you can go through as an NFL as an NFL football fan. That sucked. That was a sinking, sinking feeling getting eliminated from the playoffs in a season that held so much potential. And honestly, a part of me feels like the fans maybe need their pound of flesh. I get it. I honestly do. But at the same time, I do think there are some good points being brought up as to whether or not it's time to move on from Tom Telesco. The team has shown growth over the last few seasons. They really, really have. But has it been enough? And in a season like this, where we just displayed exactly why the Chargers need to move on from Big Tom. Because there's a really important thing about to happen, man. A huge, a vastly important offseason is just around the corner. Is it time to put someone else in the driver's seat before those big, big decisions need to be made? We're going to go over the case, you know, for maybe replacing Tom Telesco or keeping Tom Telesco in this video. I want to have it like, you know, both sides of the coin kind of represented in this one. Before we do, guys, question for you guys in the comments. What are the minimum signings that you as a fan demand of the team to see from a Chargers GM this season? It could be, you know, we need a defensive tackle. We need a wide receiver. We need a corner. You guys can add names if you need to. Let me know in the comment section below. Well, let's get into this one, man. Hot, hot topic coming in today. Before we do, hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this Chargers content, this Chargers offseason content. Small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, bell notification helps me out a lot. Let's get into this one, baby. Lights, camera, action. What to do with Big Tom, Tom Telesco, and what to do at GM. Big, big offseason coming up, dudes. This could be a huge, huge decision for the Chargers. And I kind of wanted to go over both sides of the coin here. Should the Chargers keep them? Should the Chargers move on? This first segment is maybe going to air some of the dirty laundry of a Tom Telesco and maybe highlight some of his shortcomings. Please hang in there till the end, guys. I want to make sure that we've got, you know, both sides represented before we start opinionating and, and throwing comments on Reddit and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Because, again, this has been a hot topic of conversation. I want to make sure at least both of the sides of the coin, in my perspective, are well represented in this video. First off, in the first really tough segment to go over with Tom Telesco is the data. The a lack of success on the record sheet. After almost 10 years, there's been a huge amount of data to back up whether or not to keep Tom or let him go. And there is a potential termination, guys. Tom Telesco, right now, big statistic that kind of opened my eyes to the whole situation. Tom Telesco, as of right now, is 69 and 76. That's 69 wins to 76 losses as the GM of the Chargers since 2013. Only making the postseason twice. Honestly, guys, I read that and I was like, oh, man, that's a long, long time. A lot of data. 69 wins. Wink. I don't know if it's going to get the job done for a lot of people. The Chargers have never won the division under Tom Telesco either. And again, that is a long, long time to gather data and come up with that record. And honestly, it does not look good maybe the Chargers are turning a corner in recent years and in the, in the, specifically in this last season but um Tom's had a long time to sort of figure this out and 69 to 76 does not look good a coaching carousel now since hiring Tom Telesco the Chargers have hired three different head coaches starting with <laughs> Mike McCoy man I don't know man I wasn't the biggest fan of the Mike McCoy hiring but that's the first thing he did he brought in Mike McCoy McCoy ended 27 and 37 with a win percentage of 0.422. 
0.422. Mike McCoy, that experiment, crash and burn in the Pacific Ocean. Nextly, he brings in Anthony Lynn. And honestly, you know, again, I will continue to say this. Anthony Lynn is a human being, you know, very charismatic, very, very likable. And in some ways, I still do look up to him as a human being myself. But he ended his tenure with the Chargers 33 and 31 with a win percentage of 0.516. A little bit better than Mike McCoy. Uh, definitely in that, you know, win column is, is not too bad. But still didn't quite get the job done. The Chargers moved on this last season to Brandon Staley, who ended his first season nine and eight with a percentage of 5.29 so again the numbers have been going up statistically there has been growth but over the course of almost a decade i i still think that's too slow can we be optimistic and say hey you know what we got the right one now we got brandon staley now things are about to shift and look a little bit different absolutely we can say that some people do not share in that opinion because of again some of the mistakes that brandon staley made this season but at the same time, I, I do see it trending up. Is it fast enough? I don't know. But there have been some big mistakes on Tom's part. It's been a long, long time until I start feeling really good about a Chargers head coach. I was feeling good about Anthony Lynn. I'm not going to lie about that. But, uh, you know, ultimately it did not pay off. Hopefully it's different with Brandon Staley. Next up, a long history of subpar position quality. And when I talk position quality, I'm talking about, you know, specific aspects of the team, the run defense, the special teams, the wide receivers, the quarterback. Those are what I'm talking about. And one big, big thing as a Chargers fan that I was very consistent with since I was in high school was that if you're a fan of the Chargers, you're going to go without an offensive line. It was one of the worst in the NFL for the longest time. And luckily, it seems this last offseason, Brandon Staley played a role in breaking that trend. But it's one that was carried by Tom Telesco for a long time. That offensive line would not get fixed. It drove me crazy. Seeing Phillip Rivers run for his life every single week and every single season, it seemed it was the same story. We, weren't, we were not going to fix that offensive line. Could we afford it? I don't know. But at the same time, it just felt like something that should have been fixed that was never fixed year in and year out another big thing has been the special teams as well my god <laughs> if you've been a chargers fan for longer than a decade you will understand the pain the consistent pain of missing kicks to lose games of missing extra points of whiffing on the kick return on whiffing on the punt return special teams have been wildly bad for the better part of a decade how long is it going to take for tom to find a kicker i don't know it seems like we found our punt returner in uh, Andre Roberts this season. Maybe we got the guy now in Dustin Hopkins. He's looked better than a lot of other guys I've seen in a long time. But that has been a consistent with Tom Telesco for very many years. The defense at times has been serviceable. I will say that over the past couple of seasons, the run defense has been atrocious. But for the most part, the defense, I would say as a whole, may be a little bit lacking. And again, that's under Tom's tenure. Next up, another good point right here is free agency whiffs. Um, I would say free agency has been a touchy subject for Chargers fans since Tom Telesco took over as GM because it feels like we don't make a lot of big moves, right? And the ones we do make a lot of times blow up in our face. The only free agent prior to 2020 that I can remember being great was KC Hayward. Man, was that a good signing, dude? I hated letting him go this offseason as well. We could probably tack that on to the, uh, the pros and cons of TT. Casey Hayward is a great signing, but moves like Brian Bulaga and the uh, Orlando Franklin, if you can remember him, and Travis Benjamin, who we see here on the screen, these guys just burned cap away, man. They burned it away. And I think there's a big reason to that, and it might be a characteristic to Tom's GM style, right? It feels like we always make the safe move rather than the big move, and we suffer for it. Because ultimately, if these players can't carry their weight, you know, the, the outlier being Casey Hayward, they're just taking up space where we would have been able to sign a big name. Would you have traded Orlando Franklin and Travis Benjamin for the best tackle in free agency that season? I would have. Would I have traded, you know, uh, 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 Chris Harris Jr., you know, and maybe another guy for the best defensive tackle in free agency? I would have done that too. I remember the, the year that we got Chris Harris Jr. and Linval Joseph. I was most excited about Linval Joseph. A lot of people were really excited about Chris Harris Jr. And, of course, those were positions of need. But really, you want to go out there and get the best guy. 
You want to get the best guy. Because Lindsley, Corey Lindsley, this last offseason, he was a great signing. He is a great example of what happens when you go big. We went out there and we got the best center in the, in football. We got the best center in free agency. And you know what? That cap went to good use. That cap was not wasted. Don't waste cap on safe picks because right now the record shows that Casey Hayward, among all those other you know safe picks, is the only outlier in my mind. Sure, we've had some good signings over the past couple of seasons, you know, prior to 2022, but only one really great one, and that was Casey. I think we got to take more risks when it comes to that cap space a little bit. Stop bringing in, you know, maybe the mid-level guys and bring in the big guy. Fix it one step at a time if you have to. Corey Lindsley is a great example of that. Next up, flurry of bad contracts. <laughs> and this is actually part of the free agency whips right here. Flurry of bad contracts. Let's actually put on the screen right here our guy Butler, right? Tom Telesco has let go of some awesome talent in free agency. Maybe not Butler included. Adrian Phillips, Desmond King, Young Wei Koo, Hunter Henry, and more. It feels like the extensions where it makes most sense sometimes don't happen. And that is something that a GM is directly responsible for. Maybe the coaching has some say in it. Maybe the attitude of the players, you know, maybe like Desmond King uh, played some hand in those decisions as well. But for the most part, Adrian Phillips leaves me gutted. That dude destroyed us when we played the Patriots this season. Hunter Henry destroyed us. <laughs> Young Wei Koo. It's almost embarrassing to see him be the best kicker in the NFL the year after we decide to let him go. Those are bad. Those are some bad decisions. Sure, he did sign some guys, kept them on the roster. We needed them, but at the same time, some big, big names moved on to greener pastures. Meanwhile, some questionable contracts were handed out. That's where our Donald Butler comes into play here. You guys remember when we extended him, one of the first things that Tom Telesco did as far as a big contract, we extended Donald Butler to a seven-year, $51 million contract, and we ended up cutting him after two seasons. That wasn't good. That wasn't good. There was some potential there. I'm sure some fans were excited to see him extended, but at the same time, man, did that blow up in our face. Orlando Franklin that we brought up before. Released after two years into his five-year contract. I think it was somewhere like 30 or $40 million. Brian Bulaga, who's only played a handful of snaps for us so far as the Chargers. Three-year, $30 million contract, kind of down the tubes. You guys remember Trey Turner, Thomas Davis, Derek Cox. The list goes on. I, I just, I don't know. I get a little nervous when it comes to free agency because we've hit so few times and we whiffed so many more. But again, the trend kind of broke this season. We're going to talk about that, you know, in some of the defensive Tom here in just a minute. Next up, the draft. The draft. DJ Floker, the draft. This is one of the biggest things when you're a GM, right? You want to get that nice scouting team out there. You want all the, the right people around you in that war room. You want to go out there and have the best draft that you can. And this is definitely one of those moments where Tom could shine. But it's also one of those moments, if we're in this portion of the video, where it's like, hey, man, Tom, we maybe could have done better. we got to talk about some of the whiffs. The Chargers have had some solid picks in recent years, but a good amount of, of busts as well. You guys see DJ Fluker up here. Man, was I excited when we drafted him. We needed offensive line help so, so bad. I didn't want to see Phillip Rivers getting killed anymore. DJ Fluker was exciting, but maybe a little bit risky. And that one blew up in our face. Jason Verrett, again, so excited about him. I don't know if I blame Tom Telesco too much about that. Maybe the injury history was enough to pass on him. But at the same time, that one blew up in our face. Big potential, moves on to the Niners, has a career. Jerry Tillery kind of blowing up in our face. Kenneth Murray, a recent selection by Tom Telesco, a trade-up selection by Tom Telesco, kind of blowing out in our face. These first rounders just could not cut it. Then we talk about the middle of the pack picks. I think this is the biggest point some chargers make in replacing Tom Telesco is that he just does not seem to hit very many gems in the middle rounds, right? We've had some, we had, we had a few good ones. Keenan Allen, for sure, the king of that category. Drew Tranquil, Desmond King, Kaiser White. Those were some pretty solid mid-tier picks. But then you got some really head-scratching ones like Joe Reed and uh, Trey McKitty, maybe a little bit. He's showing maybe to have some potential. Uh, you had KJ Hill. You had a lot of guys that didn't really stay on the roster very long, right? In nine years, I can really only recall a few good picks in the middle rounds, and that's something that GMs really, really, really have to hit on because you want to find value. You got to get value wherever you can in this league. And some would also say when it comes to the draft, some okay, some would say that Telesco's best picks, some of the picks that have you know defined this franchise the last couple of years, 
were kind of handed to him in gift baskets, right? It's like, obviously, you're going to take this guy. Obviously, you're going to take that guy. I get that. We'll counter argument to that in just a second. Lack of depth. This is probably the biggest one that upsets me with Tom Telesco a little bit, if, if we're going to be on that side of the coin. Depth may be one of the most underrated responsibilities of an NFL GM. I said it. That That is a huge, huge deal to building a football team. And that's something the Chargers really haven't had uh, uh, under Tom Telesco in his tenure. I don't know if I've ever felt really good about depth in any given position when it comes to the Chargers in my time as a fan, especially with Tom Telesco. And that's big, man. This year is a prime example of what happens when a team goes into the season with a lack of depth, with a lack of quality, quality backups. I think the biggest one was probably the Chargers corners in 2021. Uh, we went out there with uh, Mike Davis. He's okay, right? Solid cornerback, too. Asante Samuel, very unproven, very lucky that he hit. And Chris Harris Jr., who was showing a lot of decline over the last couple of seasons, right? That already wasn't a great spot. But on top of that, one thing that we did have control over, because we did have a lot of cap left over at the end of the season, um, the backups were atrocious, <laughs> When it came down to it, ASJ was out with a concussion. Chris Harris Jr. was, you know, injured. We had to roll out, you know, our depth pieces out there. Uh, it was bad. It got really, really bad to the point where some quarterbacks looked like Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre out there when they really should not have. We needed that depth this year so, so badly. And instead, we elect to keep a fullback, a third quarterback, stuff like that, where we really could have added to those position groups with some quality players. Because we, honestly, you're going to need them. In the COVID era of the NFL, where any given week you could have a flurry of your starters out, Depth could be looked at as, as maybe just as important as your starters. You have got to have solid depth. The Chargers O-line started solid, but a lack of a swing tackle, I think, cost us in that game that eliminated us from the playoffs. Max Crosby was just all over Storm Norton. Lack of depth cost us there. The defensive line started out really bad. I think the depth is actually okay at defensive line. I liked Fayoko. I liked Merrill. But um, given the state of the starters, they really just didn't have a chance. Lack of depth is a big, big highlight for me. And that's something that Tom must fix this offseason. Now let's get into some of the good, right? One of the best photos in Chargers history is Joey Bosa, Mike McCoy, and a very confused looking Tom Telesco. <laughs> this is one of the biggest moves, man. Tom, some of his picks handed to him or not have shaped the future of this team. And I do think Tom deserves some credit for his, his big picks on draft night. I remember when we selected Joey Bosa. I remember being shocked because I wanted Jalen Ramsey. A lot of fans wanted Jalen Ramsey. You know what? That would have been a good pick too. But he likely would not be with the Chargers right now. He probably would have moved on. We remember the history of Jalen Ramsey and what he wanted to do as an NFL football player. I don't think he would be with the team. Joey Bosa was the right move. He's a cornerstone piece of this defense. He drafted Justin Herbert. When the fans, including myself... We're screaming for Isaiah Simmons. He went out there and he grabbed Justin Herbert. Was it handed to him? Maybe. <laughs> that pick could have been Tua if the Dolphins had the foresight that Tom Telesco did, but they didn't, luckily enough for us. And we got Justin Herbert, perhaps the greatest quarterback in this time of his career in Chargers franchise history. That is a big defining pick. He drafted Derwin James. Again, he fell to us at 17, but that means there were 16 other teams that passed on Derwin James. Tom Telesco did not. He could have easily passed on him, too. Rashawn Slater, Asante Samuel Jr. Yeah, they could have been easy picks, but he could have easily passed on them as well because how many other teams passed on them before, we, uh, before they reached us? Without these players, most notably Herbert, this team would be dead in the water. And you know what? Handed to him or not, Tom Telesco deserves credit for some of those big picks because it's not as clear. It's not as, as picture perfect or it's not as obvious to everybody in the NFL. Otherwise, those guys would not have reached us. He could have easily passed. Next up, the injury bug. Man, you hate to see this, dude. I hate to see this, especially with Manti Teo. I was a big fan of him. Fans might be easy to forget because this season wasn't as bad as we've seen in, in seasons past, but the Chargers for the majority of Tom's tenure have been one of the most unlucky in the league when it comes to injury. Now with recent hire Brandon Staley, it seems that injuries have been handled a lot differently. 
Could we blame Tom Telesco for the Chargers injury history? Maybe a little bit for not hiring a coach who's more proactive in the team's health. But sure, whatever. We could also blame the bad luck. <laughs> bad luck is a big, big part of the NFL, of the, the health of your players. And that really sucked for a long, long time. It could suck in the future. It could have sucked this season. It did at times. But at the same time, man, the injury history of the team has been really bad. And I, for the most part, chalk it up to bad luck. We were proactive in finding a coach that was more aware and, and prepared to handle that situation this season. But um, prior to this year, man, every single year, if there was one thing, it was death taxes and somebody's going to get hurt on the Chargers and it's going to really hurt the team's chances of making the postseason. Next up, setting the scene, a new cap heaven. Now, here comes a tweet from uh, one of my favorite guys to follow on Twitter, Bolton One. This guy, man, all the time on top of it. Very fun account to follow. He pointed out the Chargers cap space history of the last, you know, decade. A plus, right? Take a look at this. Tom Telesco hired in 2013. This is what he's had to work with, dude. This is what he's had to work with. In his time, Telesco had Phillip Rivers, right? He had him on his team for the most part. And Rivers' contract was soaking up upwards of like $180 million over nine years. Sure, we were a much better team with Phillip Rivers than without Phillip Rivers, but it was very expensive to roster a franchise quarterback, and it's going to be expensive for the Chargers going forward when it's time to pay Justin Herbert. It's going to be very, very expensive. But when it comes to Tom Telesco, he seemed locked in on what he could accomplish with the, uh, the amount of cap that he had available. Now, taking a look at this, um, over his tenure... He had an average of around $25.6 million to spend each offseason. That's not a lot of cap space, man. For the first time, maybe ever, as a Chargers fan myself, we've got a lot of wiggle space with the cap space situation. He has now over maybe $80 million to work with this season when you count in some of the cuts. That's by far the most I've ever seen as a fan. So finally, finally, we might be able to see some big moves by Tom Telesco this season. The shackles have been broken. I think it's time for him to go out there and make a scene, dude. And for the first time ever, you know, set up by Tom Telesco, it's going to be a very proactive and very exciting and lots of moving pieces offseason. One that I could not be more stoked about. Take a look at this as well. Chargers top of the charts in cap space. That was set up by Tom Telesco. I hate to break it to everybody. Next up, the right partner in crime. Brandon Staley coming into the picture is a big deal, dudes. Both on and off the field. I do think he's going to get better next season. He's going to have a much better season, make much better decisions as our head coach. But off the field, I think he's got a lot of pull as well. Is it a coincidence that our best offseason in the Tom Telesco era was this past season while Brandon Staley was part of the organization? I don't think so. The Chargers offensive line, as I mentioned before, one of the worst parts of the Chargers team for a very long time, was transformed in one season. The, the, the signings of Corey Lindsley, Filer, Abushi, they transformed the worst offensive lines into one of the best ones. And I think Brandon Staley had a little bit to do with that. It feels like Tom Telesco's respect for Staley is helping steer the ship in the right direction when it comes to quality signings, you know? And with the amount of cap space that we boast in 2022, they can make some huge, huge improvements together this season. No longer are we picking up the mid-tier guy or the low-tier guy, the serviceable guy. I want to go out there and get the best guy to help transform positions of need on this team. You guys have no idea. I'm sure a lot of you do. A lot of you guys, Chargers fans, since even before me. But, you know, anybody who's recent, how big changing the offensive line, improving that offensive line, how big that move was is, is you know, I, I can't even fathom it. It was such a huge, huge, drastic change from what I've seen as a Chargers fan my whole life, my entire time being a fan. And I think we might be able to see something similar this offseason. The run defense has been something that Brandon Staley has pointed out as like being a focal point of this offseason. That could be a huge, huge improvement this offseason, among other things, cornerback, maybe even receiver, stuff like that. If Telesco, if or I'm sorry, if the Telesco and, and Staley combo, you know, works out, it could be the key to unlocking the team's offseason potential. Staley is a calculated risk taker, and I think that's what the organization, and more specifically Tom Telesco, needed at his side. Now, lastly, the long con. This season feels like it's been set up over the course of many years, right? For something extremely special to happen. The team's in a solid spot. We have to admit that. 
Because even given the lack of run defense and special teams, there is young talent all over this roster. The thought of the Chargers boasting an insane amount of cap space should cast fear into other teams this offseason. Quality talent, I'm talking big star names, should flock to Los, Angel to Los Angeles with how much cap space that we've got, a, a head coach who's a player's coach, and an elite quarterback. This team's going places. So the table is set. Chargers fans should hang on in there for one more season to see if this team and this, this front office can pull off one of the greatest overhauls in the last few decades. The last thing I do want to mention is that the grass is always greener, right? Should the Chargers risk everything and bringing in a new GM at this point? Because on one side, man, you know, we could bring in somebody that absolutely has the right mindset. They transform the team. They know everything, you know, the needs in and out. But what if we bring in someone who tanks it all? This season is set up too perfectly to mess this up. I don't know if it's risky or I don't know if it's, it's too risky at this point. I think it is. I think we got to stick with what worked last offseason. The Brandon Staley and Tom Telesco offseason was a huge success last year. It's got to happen again this year. That's kind of where I'm at. So the bottom line for me, kind of a long video today. This team is close, very, very close to doing something we maybe have never seen as fans before. And that's loading up to make a Super Bowl, not just by effort. Of course, you're going to do that every year, but also backed by data, trends, recent league history. It's around the corner. With a pick at number 17 this season, the same spot that we nabbed Derwin James from, we should see a huge contributor added to the Chargers defense, hopefully. Likely, you know, a, a Jordan Davis, Mr. Godzilla. And trust me when I say that's big. That's huge to get a starter in, in the draft. I think a lot of people are projecting him to us. But the amount of cap that we boast should help us retain our stars as well. Derwin, Mike, Kaiser White, with plenty of cap left over. Plenty to bring in some big name talent. Let's not also forget the depth on this team could completely transform in one offseason as well. We're close, dudes. We're really, really close. Hang in there for one more season. If Tom squanders this opportunity, which is definitely a possibility, then I can say I would likely join the conversation of getting him replaced. I would. But I don't think he's going to blow it. And I think the biggest reason for that is Brandon Staley. If Staley accomplished anything this season, it's that he completely changed the culture of the team. We're here to take risks. We're here to make big splashes. Last year, Staley wanted a solid offensive line for Justin Herbert. He got it. This year, he wants a defense. I bet you he's going to get it. The grass is always greener, dude. So my personal stance on Tom Telesco as of right now is I think, honestly, we should give him one more season. I think the pieces are perfectly lined up. I don't want to bring in somebody that has the potential to mess the, everything up. I don't want to risk what was built, I would say, more specifically in 2022. Big, big offseason. One that I don't think I want to risk you know, with bringing in somebody different. But you guys let me know in the comment section below. Do you guys want to keep Tom Telesco this season or would you rather see somebody else step in? It's okay if our opinions differ. That's what this channel is for. But me personally, I think we stick with Tom Telesco another year. Well, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for joining me. Get excited about all the off-season content, man. I think we're going to try and cover the Raiders-Bengals game uh, upcoming this weekend uh, on a live stream. So, you guys, I'll keep you updated on the status of that. But it should be a good time, man. Chargers off-season off to a hot start uh, as far as the content is concerned. And I do think that there's going to be a lot of exciting topics to cover here in the recent weeks or in the upcoming weeks. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. We'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up! and stay frosty.